Um, my partner over there, Ryan, if you can remember that we were all amazed by the Rolex Center. Um, uh, Jump, we were all aware of uh, that, you know, the Japanese philosophy of nature, you know, to be one with nature is very evident in a lot of your works. And in the Rolex Student Center, we were blown away because you really reinvented the plan. I'm trying to remember, but also we, it was also a very light structure, and uh, it, it looks light. That's why I think uh, your architecture is, uh, the best way to describe your architecture is about lightness and transparency, if you don't mind. That's how I feel about it. And uh, the Rolex Center for me was actually, uh, it's very light in a sense that if you experience it from the interior point of view, uh, normally, a lot of Japanese architects, with their sensibility in treating the screen, for example, or transparency, they really treat it with transparency. If you can see it in the soji, you know, partitions in the old Japanese structures. And but for this center, it was unique because there was nothing in the glass. But if you view it from the inside. Uh, um, the, the filtering of the light comes in, it's filtered through the floor and the ceiling. That was for me a really ingenious way of, you know, filtering light because uh, I noticed that in Japanese architecture, they really love to treat light, filter light inside the house, you know, but this is a very different way. So, I think three, four years ago, that was really an impact. Looking at that work and the re reinvention of the plan, it's, it was amazing to see that uh, you have amphitheater seating on those, those mounds that you were showing us. Um, I think uh, that's why, I think for me that was the culmination of your work. But one thing that I just realized now after looking at your presentation was talk about lightness is how consistent your models were to the actual building. I can see that uh, you, 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 were, you were just saying it's heavy, right? Uh, I can see that maybe the way I understand it that the floor, the undulating floor, the um, is probably a structural slab. Then you have little tiny tendrils of columns, you know, all over the place. But you don't see it because they're really thin and slim. And you also have this in the contemporary architect, uh, contemporary museum in Japan, in, in the prefecture. And I was just wondering that Japan, being a, a zone you know, where you experience lots of seismic activity, how you can really do this. So I think for the benefit of my colleagues. A very good question to ask you now would be, how were the structures designed for those buildings? And, or was it really a, a, an excessive or a relentless pursuit for lightness? Because you also had it in the Rolex Center, in, and that was in, in Switzerland, which is actually but as a strong foundation, they don't really have that much seismic activity there. But you have it again in Japan using very slim, very light structure. So, uh, can you please explain? Yeah, and, uh, the structure is very important for us, how to realize the real space. So very beginning, we always collaborate uh, structure engineer, especially the Sasaki. And uh, so, but sometimes in the abroad, very difficult. Some system not allowed us, because how to divide the money 
also strongly related to the building. So in Japan, we somehow e control easier than abroad. And so the maybe we use the some little more money than normal structure. But sometimes abroad, the construction system is different. For example, EPF, we are hired by the construction company, DM. So we cannot control the money. So we prefer use the money a little bit more structure and use a little bit less uh, expensive material inside. But sometimes the system didn't allow us to move this money to structure. So that means the Rolex uh, Center, EPF Rolex Center, the, our original structure engineer's idea is the thickness is thinner, was thinner, but we couldn't do it. Then it's nice, but uh, very dynamic, <laughs> actually very heavy. Uh, we put more steel than in the concrete tried. But now, the end, the only concrete structure fly. Of course, this uh, calculated by our structure engineer, the Sasaki made uh, some software. So the process today, I didn't show, but a very long process. Uh, he made a software, and then we made a very low-tech model. And uh, because from activity, we couldn't uh, make steep slope. But from structure point of view, of course, steep one is, uh, works well. So then the computer calculate, and actually computer doesn't, uh, also computer needs some conversation with the people. So the Sasaki conversate, communicate with the uh, structure, uh, the computer, and then he gives some advice to us. And then we make very low tech model and check. And then we say, we prefer this. And then again, he this, this. And then this process, I try to explain. Sometimes, uh, oh, Sasaki said, if you make a big hole here, this is the end, become courtyard. And then this works. Otherwise, you need this slope, or you need two meter concrete thickness. So this process, we <laughs> and then, so we, I believe the Structure is very important, which type of space we want to achieve. So that, is, uh, and in Japan, it's very, because of earthquake, so to compare to the design in abroad, much harder, but, uh, uh, but much harder. Wind pressure also very strong in Japan, and also the Bukowska earthquake. So anyway, the lighter one will better than the heavy one. So maybe historically, the Japanese tradition has some light <laughs> uh, structure. 